Great glue test, Batman! Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. I am having an absolute blast here because I love numbers. And if you look at this, this is the raw data. It is, um, well, it, it, it's a lot of data. <laughs> and I've had a lot of fun over the last uh, two months or so running this whole test and getting everything set for it. I do wanna say a huge thank you to Wildman Tech. He's the guy who made the testing rig. Uh, he has a video on making that. Um, he's helped me in the past and we've done several other collaborations. Uh, he's one of the guys who makes my clamps. So if you wanna see that, I'll leave a link to his videos down below. And I just, I gotta say thank you. you uh, without this, without your help, this test wouldn't have happened. I also want to say a thank you to Terry Baptista. Um, you have been a huge, huge help in crunching all this data. Um, he's been helping me do the, the collation and the bringing all of the raw data into something that is actually readable. <laughs> and uh, it is a, a huge help for that. Also, a huge thank you to all the patrons on Patreon and uh, the several people who have generously um, given something towards this. Thank you for that. Without your help financially, I would not have been able to do this. This is probably uh, it's a little over $1,000 out of my pocket to actually make this happen in purchasing glue and purchasing the scale and getting everything set up. Um, it was a large undertaking, so I want to say thank you for that. And I'm hoping to do other tests in the future and some other things going on. Now that I have this rig in place, it'll be a lot easier to put some other glues on there and test it and get some more data from other points. But enough with that, let's actually get into some of the numbers. Uh, you know, if any of you are wanting to actually look at the numbers yourself and go into the detail, I will have a link down below to the raw data and all of these sheets uh, that connect to it. And you can see I have all these papers out here of of information and uh, you can go and take a look at that yourself so check out the link down below when you want to uh, dive into that. Also if you'd like information about how it was actually done and how the data was collected the procedure for actually testing I have a whole link to that video down below where I go into detail about all the types of glues I'm testing how they were done some of the parameters that were taken care of um, a couple things I didn't mention to that number one I'm doing 10 tests of each glue in each situation. Um, so that means 40 tests over the, um, over the four tests. There's 40 individual blocks that broke off, 10 for each test. Um, I would like to do more in the future. The, uh, the standard deviation was a little bit larger than I would have liked. So it's not dead on conclusive, hard, solid evidence. I'd probably have to do around 50 or so tests for each glue to get that um, level of evidence. But it is a really clear cut amount of evidence that gives you a, a good indication of where you're going. And uh, some of the numbers are large enough that it's, it's, it's fact. <laughs> so definitely have some fun looking through the data. So in this, we have four different tests. We have long grain to long grain, long grain to end grain and gap filling and then exterior water. Um, <laughs> how does it withstand to living outside in the snow and freezing conditions and water? Now, first off, um, one of the things that really made me jump into this is the hide glues. Is it better to go out and buy old brown or tight bond liquid hide glue? Or is it better to make your own high glue? Now there is something to be said for making your own high glue. If you actually want to make your own high glue or if you want to use the, uh, the dry and make your own high glue in a pot or actually make it, um, that's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And there's something to be said with uh, using your own glue. But the tight bond high glue and the old brown high glue are just so easy. So is it better to use this glue or is it better to use this glue? And if so, which one? Is it really worth your time? And so this is what brought on this whole glue test. So I figured I'd start there with the data from the high glues. Basically the number one overall high glue was my homemade high glue, which actually surprised me. I kind of expected it to do a little poor. It is a little bit clearer of a high glue. It doesn't, doesn't have quite the coloring, uh, but in most cases it stood up fairly well. And in the exterior test, it was the only high glue that actually had a couple blocks that held on. Uh, so even for exterior work, it still had some strength. Um, though I would not use this for an exterior glue, it would, it would fail eventually. But to answer the question between do you use liquid high glue or dry high glue, the, the numbers came out fairly close. In most cases, old brown or the tight bond high glue ended up being a little bit stronger than the dry high glue, but not by a whole much. And as to the high glue strengths, the 315 was stronger than the 251, which was stronger than the 192. Just as we expected, they actually held up 
just about the exact same on all three tests. Well, all four tests, except for all of these failed the external. So don't use the high glue outside. So let's jump into long grain to long grain, the most common glue joint. And this is kind of the one where a lot of people are wanting to know <gasps> what glue should I use? And it was a kind of a surprising thing. The number one long grain to long grain glue was cheap super glue. That blew my mind. <laughs> um, big time. This is the stuff that I bought at, uh, um, at the dollar store and it was phenomenally good. It was significantly better than most other glues. Now, that being said, the amount of force that this provided was far, far stronger than the amount of force that would be needed for any particular joint. Even if you had a sloppy joint, um, this provides far more strength than you need. But coming up closely behind the super glue was actually the epoxies. Uh, number one, slightly higher, was the East Coast resin. But right behind that, just by a couple pounds, was the West System epoxy. And in particular, it was the West System fast epoxy that did better than the slow epoxy. I kind of thought that the slow epoxy would do better, but in all cases, uh, except for ingrain, the fast epoxy did better. So that was kind of surprising. But close in behind the epoxies, you have Type Bond 3 and Type Bond 2. They were about 10 PSI between the two, and they were really, really close. I'm Type Bond 3 doing ever so slightly than Type Bond 2. Um, so yes, this is a phenomenal glue for long grain to long grain. And if your joint is even slightly good, even if it has some gaps, uh, this is the glue you want to use. Um, Type Bond 2 or Type Bond 3, they do a great job together. I think I'm going to be continuing to use Type Bond 2 as my primary long grain to long grain glue. Number one, because I can get it in these gallon jugs rather affordably. And number two, it was right up there with all of them. I'm not having to mess with the epoxy. I can just put it on and go. I like this stuff. I trust it. Then right behind the PVAs, we run into Old Brown High Glue. Uh, really, really good glue. It wasn't quite as strong as the PVAs, and you can see it as the uh, as you get into the dry glues, they were a little bit weaker, but not by that much. They are still a really significantly strong glue, and if your joint is decent, that will do all you need and far more. So high glue, yeah, good long grain to long grain glue. Then up next, we have the uh, the 2P10 glues. Uh, the, they're basically a super glue, a cyanoacrylate. And they did surprisingly well. These held up really, really well, particularly the gel and uh, um, the thick glue. They, they held their strength for the long grain to long grain. So um, a good glue, I am going to be using these far more now seeing this, I am very surprised. The one question I have is how they will last over long term. Uh, so I might be doing a long term study you know, every six months for the next 20 years or so to see, you know, do they stand up to that? But uh, we'll see how that comes out. And then there were all the rest of the glues, and they they went down. They, the Gorilla Glue did okay, not that well. The Cascomite was, uh, yeah, it was okay for long grain to long grain, but not amazing. Um, the contact cements were absolutely horrible. Um, and the foam glue was, eh. Um, the one that was supposed to be amazing, the uh, Marine Adhesive 5200, um, really did not impress me and is not worth the money in my book. So, yeah, there we go. So let's jump into long grain to end grain. This is where it get kind of, gets kind of interesting. I did not expect most glues to do any strength at all long grain to end grain. I mean, just long grain directly to the end grain. How does it stand to it? And this is where things get really interesting because the number one answer was 2P10 gel. Cyanoacrylate? Yeah, number one on long grain to end grain. Pfft, who knew? <laughs> um, closely behind that, we have the epoxies and the uh, the PVAs, uh, but the numbers for the uh, the 2P10 cyanoacrylate were right up there at the top, doing phenomenal, phenomenal work. And then close behind those, we have the high glue. Um, especially my homemade high glue was again the strongest of the high glues and did a phenomenal job. So. I was actually really impressed. I expected the long grain to end grain to snap and not have much of any pressure, but most of these were doing like 200 PSI to break them, which for joinery is a really significant number. The other interesting surprise is the Elmer's glue and the white wood glue. These two ended up doing fairly similar throughout the test. They were pretty much the same glue uh, for, for tests. So if you're in a pinch and all you have around is craft glue, um, go ahead and use it. It's actually a, a significant glue. So next up we have gap filling. And this is where things really got interesting and my mind started to explode. 
When I built my first bench, I had a lot of gaps. My, my joinery wasn't that phenomenal. And so I asked around and everyone said, the glue you should use is Gorilla Glue. It is a, a foaming glue that fills the pores and expands and it's a gap filling glue. Makes sense. So I tested it. This is like down near the bottom of the list. Don't ever use Gorilla Glue for gaps. This stuff doesn't work for gaps. And if anyone has ever told you that, Hand them the data, don't use Gorilla Glue. So what did work for gap filling? Now most people are gonna think epoxy. Epoxy, it's really sturdy, it's strong. But the number one glue for gap filling was Type on 3. It was right up there with uh, 391 PSI needed to break it, which really surprised me. I kind of think of uh, the PVAs as being brittle. Um, but number two, uh, number three was Type Bond 3, and uh, number one was Type Bond 3, number Three was type bond two. But the surprising thing is what was number two and number four and number five? Cyanoacrylate, super glue for a gap filling glue. Three of the top five glues were 2P10 super glue. <laughs> a gap filling glue. Um, I was really, really impressed with this. I mean, giving serious numbers. The, uh, the 2P10 gel had a PSI of 389, just three pounds behind, behind Type Bond 3. That stuff's good. Um, I'm going to start using it more, so check that out. And then down behind the PVAs and the thick super glues, then came in the epoxies. And right in the middle of the epoxies were the, the hide glues. Um, actually doing a surprisingly decent job for, for gap filling. Um, if I had to choose one or the other for gap filling, I'd probably choose a PVA over a high glue, but it does a decent job, and it, the poundages coming up for it were, were phenomenal. For instance, the uh, homemade high glue had a PSI breaking strength of 276. Um, that's really impressive for gap filling. So the next up, let's dive into the outside glues. Now, I have always thought that Type Bond 3 is the outside glue. It says waterproof. And Type Bond 2, if you look on the label, it also says water resistant. That's got to be what you should use outside. Unfortunately, Type Bond 3 and Type Bond 2 and all the PVAs basically failed. Most all the blocks broke off before they even got to the test. Um, now, to be honest, I had a rather brutal test because they were sitting outside on my table through several freeze-thaw cycles. They were getting wet, they were getting snow, they were getting frost. But all they were doing was sitting outside. And in most of the blocks, they fell off before I could even get them inside to the test rig. So for an outside glue, I, I don't think I would use a Type Bond 3 as I would have in the past. The glues in number one, number three, and number four space are all 2P10. <laughs> the gel and the thick glue actually did really nice in the exterior glues. For instance, the 2P10 gel had a 337 PSI. The 2P10 thick with activator had 312 and without the activator had 298. Um, all right in the same ballpark of being a significant glue for exterior work. So I was really impressed with that. And then right in amongst and right behind that are the West System, and particularly the, uh, the West System Fast did really, really well for exterior work. So for me, I think for my exterior work, I'm going to be using epoxies in the future. They are strong enough that I, I can trust them outside. So I, I think that's going to change something I do. I'm not going to be using the Type Bond 3 anymore. I'm going to be using the epoxies for my exterior glue-ups. The one that really surprised me is this marine glue that I was told is the cat's pajama and the stuff you should be using. It is the 3M5200 and it comes in a caulk tube. I think it's more of like a construction adhesive, but it's designed for marine applications. I was really not happy with it. It was about halfway down the list and right behind it and in pretty close proximity is my homemade hide glue. Um, so yeah, uh, I was not happy with it, um, and I really couldn't see any particular use in any of these for wood-to-wood -wood adhesion for the 3M5200. So, yeah, 
not worth it. So if you really want to see any of this data, all of it is down in the sheets below. Go ahead and crunch the numbers. I would love to hear what is surprising to you. The, the biggest surprise to me is how strong the 2P10 and Cyanaracolite, and particularly the cheap super glue. And in most instances, the cheap super glue is right up there with the thick and gel 2P10, um, doing really, really well. The thin um, 2P10, I was not as happy with. Uh, it, uh, I think that it just it, it, it absorbs too much into the wood and there's too much void in there. It doesn't hold as well. Um, but for the thick and gel, it is a really, really good glue. And so, I think I'm going to be using it more often. I'm probably going to be doing a long-term test in the future just to see how does it handle over time, but I was impressed enough that I'm going to be using this far more in my woodworking. Um, yeah, this isn't sponsored. I have no sponsorships in this, so this is completely from the raw data. And if you want to see it for yourself, you can go look at the data and uh, crunch it for yourself. Um, I was really surprised with a lot of this. Now, there were a lot of other little surprises and other things I'd love to talk about, otherwise this video will get incredibly long. Um, so I'm probably gonna be doing a live video in the next couple days where I'm gonna sit down at the computer and actually open up the spreadsheet and go through the data and talk about a lot of the things that surprised me. That'll end up being a little bit longer of a video, um, but for those of you who love crunching numbers, keep an eye open for that. That should be a lot of fun. So this is it for the data. Um, I've got a lot more tests to do. I would like to actually do several tests with construction adhesive, and now that I have a standard method, I can do other tests and other glues and bring them back and get a fairly accurate data to others that I've done in the past. So I want to, I want to expand this glue list. Um, if you have any particular glue you'd like me to test, feel free to send me a sample, and I'll put it through the ringer and compare it to these, how, we, how we've gotten. Maybe someday in the future, I'll get an assistant and some other time, and we'll be able to expand this test from 10 instances up to like 50 or 60, maybe 100 instances, and really get in incredibly clear data of how it's actually coming together. So this has been a lot of fun. Thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys have really made this happen. Um, and several of you who have given out of your heart, thank you for that. I hope this was of value to you because it was a lot of fun for me. Um, yeah, we'll be doing more glue tests in the future. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What did you see that was really mind blowing for you? Is there anything particular you'd like me to try in the future? Um, I'd love to hear it. Uh, if you would like to subscribe and, and comment below and like the video, that does help, and it helps a lot more than you might think. If you do want to see some behind-the-scenes footage and some other things that are happening, my second channel is right up here. And that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.